Do you want to start a business, get out of the office, achieve happiness and success while crushing life? This is Boss to Boss, the place to be for that extra motivation to get up and follow your dreams while learning from the ones who have already done it. And now for your host, Miro Weslow. What is up? How you doing? How you feeling? Welcome to your one-stop shop for all the tips and recipes you'll ever need to take control of your life and finally become boss. Today's guest is Travis Chapel. Travis is a direct sales expert, successful entrepreneur, real estate investor, and super connector. He is the creator and host of Build Your Network, a podcast dedicated to helping professionals cultivate genuine relationships, grow their inner circle, and leverage a powerful network the right way. Travis. Miro, what's happening, bro? Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on the show. Can you uh, can you go into a little further, tell the listeners what else you do besides your podcast, which has really blown up lately? Yeah, yeah. So I've been in door-to-door sales since the time I was like 19, 20 years old, um, still when I was still in college. And uh, I, I was always just a salesperson. And then, uh, but I always obviously was an ambitious salesperson. So I would push myself for my production, but then I always wanted more. And so I started doing more like the team management and um, building teams of salespeople and, uh, and stuff like that. And so after doing that for two or three different companies, um, I realized that in the end, even though I'd built everything for from, from scratch for the entire sales team, in the end, it was still the owner's company. It wasn't my company. It wasn't something that I could um, put my name on. And ultimately, they still had the final decision in what happened with my guys and my sales team that I had built up. So I viewed the people as my people. They viewed them as their people because it was their company, but they were my guys. They followed me. So it was just kind of always kind of this confusing gray area. And I was just eventually was just like, you know what, enough's enough. And uh, so I started my own company called Revive Water. So we sell water filtration systems like whole home water, uh, water softening units, um, water treatment units, reverse osmosis, alkaline machines, basically anything water filtration, we sell that. Um, right now, a lot of it's door-to-door. We've just invested uh, some money for the first time ever, really in my career, <laughs> that I've invested in marketing uh, because my marketing has always just been a couple knocks on a door. Um, so we're we're testing a, a couple different uh, things like that right now um, so that I can pr- provide a little bit better experience and a more duplicatable system for my sales reps. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's that's like that's like my main money maker, and that's where I focus a good amount of my time. The podcast is just more like my passion project, stuff that I really enjoy doing, and that's how you and I got connected, Miro, and um, been connected with so many awesome people since I started the podcast. And it's just a fantastic way to just really explode uh, your network. So, yeah, especially the fact that your podcast is called "Build Your Network." Yeah, uh, it works out. It works better, out. What better way? I mean, the amount of people you've met through it already. Uh, yeah, it's just. I guess that's pretty irreplaceable itself. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty crazy that you recently are just started marketing for your company. That's already been mm-hmm. doing pretty good for a few years. And uh, how were you? How were you able to keep it up like that? I mean, what? Yeah, that's the coolest thing about door-to-door sales, man, is that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, door-to-door sales, there is no marketing. Like you are the, you are the, the salesperson is the marketer, you know, so um, it's pretty, it's a pretty valuable asset and skill set to be able to learn because um, if you don't have the money to go spend, you know, thousands of dollars on marketing and getting your name out there, um, you can always go knock a couple doors and get some and generate some revenue like pretty instantly. Um, so it's always really cool just to go out and generate business literally out of thin air, um, just by knocking on a couple of doors. So that's how I've always done it. And that's how I've trained my people. And that's how I've always trained people. Um, so now that I'm, that I'm really trying to focus on expanding the business, I realize that, you know, 99% of people who try to order sales don't stick with it. Um, and so that, that weeds out the caliber of person that I typically work with but I understand that it is 
uh, going to be a lot easier for me and for my managers and reps if I can create a more duplicatable system that offers the chance to succeed to a lot more people that maybe wouldn't be able to make the door to door thing happen. You know, maybe they're a good closer or a good presenter or they build rapport with customers really well, but they're really bad knocking on a door. And I've had a lot of a lot of reps like that that were they were in and out, they were in and out, they were good for one month, they were bad the next month. They'd stick around for six to eight months and then it finally eventually fall off because um, one aspect of that was gone. You know, in door to door, you have to be all encompassing. You have to, you have to be the one to generate the business, and then you have to be the one to close the business. Um, and a lot of times, people's skill sets are really only built toward one of those things, not both of them. And uh, so now, trying to generate business for my reps to go into, um, it'll allow me, it'll open doors to, uh, you know, allow me to go out and recruit really good reps, offer them, offer them uh, more of a system to just get plugged into and um, create opportunity for them to you know propel forward in my company yeah no I mean that's that's some good stuff right there and, and I could definitely attest to all this Travis has given me some great tips for door-to-door sales <laughs> though yeah. unfortunately I haven't really been had enough time to uh, you know put them all to use but yeah and plus it's tips. been covered in snow over there so I can't blame you for that yes I, I've only I've only knocked in the snow one time it was just one of those fluky Southern California days where uh, we, we did get snow, some really uh, bad weather storm that was in town, and I was already knocking. It was just raining, and then all of a sudden, it started snowing, and so I was just like, nah, whatever, I'm still out here, so I just kept knocking. <laughs> but uh, dedication, man. Yeah, no, that was it. early on in my career when I had like when I was just really, really trying to get after it. So if that happened now, I'd be like, yeah, I'm going home. <laughs> right, so. right. Back then, it's, it didn't matter. And I mean, coming from Chicago or being here, uh, I guess we shouldn't use snow as an excuse, though. So that's all on me. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> all right. Let's make that next uh, transition to the next segment uh, where we actually now everybody knows a little bit more about you. And uh, let's dig in a little bit deeper with the theme of the show, Boss to Boss. And mm-hmm. we kind of we want to get to know more about you and know how you made that transition from, you know, as you were saying, you were working for a few different companies and, you know, you had your own team, but you still you know, the, the company still owned the team. And, you know, at the end of the day, it was their say, not yours. And eventually you made that transition to now being your own boss. So let's get a little bit uh, more about that. Uh, first thing I want to ask you, when did you realize enough was enough and it was pretty much time to leave your nine to five? A uh, really good question, bro. So uh, to kind of preface, give a little bit more context to this, um, I, I, I didn't own my own company until this last year. Um, but I was mostly like 1099 independent contractor work. So, um, kind of like being a business owner without actually being a business owner, as far as like, I didn't, I didn't have a salary, meaning, meaning nobody told me I had to come in. Um, if I produced, I made money. If I didn't produce, I didn't make money basically. Um, so I've only actually had an actual nine to five for like five weeks (laughs) because I just could not, I could not handle it, bro. Like, um, I literally only got it because we were moving up to Fresno. Fresno, my wife and I were moving from Lancaster, which is in Southern California, moving up to Central California in Fresno. And I wanted to buy a house, but I was not 100% commissioned sales rep long enough for the bank to take my income um, and qualify me for a home loan. So I uh, went and did an internal transfer in the solar company I was working for, got a salary job at the, at the solar company for about five weeks. Literally like two days after it closed escrow, I quit that job and went right back <laughs> to being um, an independent contractor because uh, I just hated when people told me what to do. So in these settings, in these settings, you can you – can, um, set your own schedule and kind of be your own boss, so to speak, as far as like, you know, they're not, they're not telling you, you got to be out on doors or you have to go work this certain time. But for me, it was a problem. And where I really realized it, um, that I, that I wanted to, um, actually start my own business was, uh, after the second time that I had built up an entire team of people and sold for this, um, this one company for a while. And, like I said, I wanted to I wanted to expand. So uh, this particular uh, business owner didn't really want to expand his business a lot. He had done it a couple of times, and um, 
and just pro- provided a lot of extra problems and headache that he just didn't want to take on. Um, and it, I wouldn't say that he's not ambitious for that. It was just like he he was okay. You know, he was clearing you know seven fifty or a million a year, pretty much net profit in his pocket. And so he was like he was chilling. He was cool with that. Like he was not he he didn't want to add a ton of extra work and stress and headache to get to the ten million dollar mark. He just didn't want to do it. So when I wanted to expand the business and become like a sub dealer for him, this is when I was working in alarms and security systems. Um, when I wanted to do that, uh, there, there, he was less than, than helpful, I guess would be a a good way to, to put it. Um, just, it just made it pretty difficult for me to actually make that transition and open up a new office and, and all that kind of stuff. And then gave me incentives to move back to Fresno and like stay in his old office. And then when I did, basically he had given the members of my team to other managers. And when I came back, basically said, oh, I'm not going to let you like work with them anymore because they're already working with other managers, even though they all wanted to come back and work with me. Um, so it was just kind of like a big realization for me. Like, oh man, I've been building this up for like the last year and been putting my, you know, uh, my nose to the grindstone, so to speak. And, um, and then in the end, like somebody still gets to make the final decision and that's his right. You know what I mean? Like he, he's the business owner. He gets to make the final shot, the, 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 the final call. He's the one taking all the stress and the nightmare of having expenses and employees and, and office space and like all that kind of stuff. So like ultimately it is his business and he gets to make the decisions. And so, um, it took me a while to like kind of get over, I I was kind of like irritated about it for a while and it took me a while to be like, to really start understanding, you know, on the backside, what he was looking at. Um, so I have a lot more empathy for that situation now. Um, but it still sucked at the time. And that was when I really realized I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta really put myself in a different position if, um, so that I don't run into this again. Um, and, uh, so about, uh, it took me like, Oh, maybe about a year or so to really find what I wanted to do and open up the water business. And then around the same time as when I started the podcast as well. So, um, took, took me about a year to figure out what that next step was going to be, but I just knew that I was done doing what I was doing before. Well, that that's a perfect transition into the next segments because I was going to ask you, did you know what you were going to do next or did you totally, you know, just quit and go into the unknown? Yeah. So uh, this is something that I talk with people on on a regular basis because I, I like to hear people's feedback on it. I, I just quit. I was just when I get for, when I get done with something, like I'm done with it. I I don't do like the you know. Well, I'll just keep doing this for another six months until I find something. And a lot of people would fault me for that. And and maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe I should just you know stick with it. But it's hard for me mentally to do that. And I think that it's probably a lot easier if you're working an actual nine to five to do that because you can just show up to work and you get paid on Friday. But I was working 100% commission, independent contract a door-to-door like sales job so like if like so when I was done it's it's a lot more difficult to like motivate yourself to get off the couch and go knock doors when you really don't want to do it at all because you don't want to work for the company or make that company any more money like it, it's a little bit different if, if that makes sense um, if I was work, working a nine-to-five or something I think I would have stayed a little bit longer just to keep collecting checks and make sure that I was good. Um, but since it was 100% commission, I had to like be all in or be all out basically. So when I was all out, I was like, all right, I'm done. And I stopped doing it. <clears throat> My wife was gracious enough to go start working again. And then I had a real estate investment that uh, that went really well and padded our bank account, for, which basically just allowed me to take the next six, seven months off really, you know, I'm, I'm peddling something all the time. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a hustler. I'm a door to door sales guy. So like, uh, it's not like I was making zero dollars during that time. Um, but I wasn't making near the income that I was making obviously before. Um, and so we, um, padded our bank account with that real estate investment. My wife was working again and allowed me to kind of just like go to the gym in the morning, work out for a few hours, um, come back home and then just dive into personal development, into audiobooks, into po- and that's when I first discovered podcasting. And, uh, so it, it took me, it took me a long time to really figure that out and when I was trying to figure out what I was going to do next a buddy of mine hit me up and was like hey man you got to check out this water thing and uh, so I said okay yeah let's go check it out and basically we went out I worked with them for a couple of days we sold a couple of deals and I was like wow this is this is actually a really lucrative business um, and it's something that I believe in it's a product that I believe in that I can actually get behind it cleans people's water like that's 
pretty important. Um, and, uh, so then probably about four or five months after working with him, we decided to kind of part ways and kind of start our own businesses. And so he went and started his own business. I went and started my own business in different areas and, uh, and yeah, that's what kind of brings us to today now. Yeah. That's something people always ask me, you know, do you, do you have that plan? Do you just do it? And even though I had a nine to five and I sort of had a plan, I feel like at times you just need to go ahead and do it just because otherwise you're constantly going to find an excuse, a reason to stay. And mm -hmm. you, you need that free time. You need that time to kind of think, think it through. And yeah, uh, I think that's very important. Yeah. And I'm huge on practicality too. So like, I'm never going to tell people to jump ship too early. Um, like I said, I knew that I had a couple of things that I could sell every once in a while to make some income. I knew that my wife was working and I knew that I just got a really big check from a real estate flip that we did. So like, uh, if you're in a position where it's like, man, if I quit, I'm not going to make rent next month or like, I'm going to foreclose on my house. Uh, it's, it's, I, it's hard for me to tell you to quit you know what I mean? Like I would say just stick with it for a while and then use those hours between five o'clock and 2 AM to really put work into that side hustle so that you can break off from that job or nine to five as soon as you possibly can. Um, but there's entrepreneurship has a level of practicality and I think too many people, especially now in this like entrepreneurship culture that's c really come up in the last five years, um, with social media and everything, I think people just lose that practicality because they want to like boast that they're an entrepreneur and they almost like they look at it as like a badge of honor to tell their war stories. Like I'm sleeping on my sister's couch and you know whatever and I, I'm hustling 16 hours a day and it's like bro you're chilling on your sister's couch and like eight of those hours is just you like playing around on Facebook like don't, stop telling me that you're like working and hustling you're not making any money you're not you don't have a plan you quit your job too soon and now you're a burden to a family member because you're not like making things happen you're just pretending like you are um, so I think there's a huge level of practicality a lot of people miss out on I think that's a great way to summarize it and put it uh, I think the listeners will get some very good uh, stuff, very, very good uh, ideas out of that and a good way to break it down. I, I guess there's one thing that I really got out of this is that um, in, in, in order to uh, buy a property and close escrow, you need to get that uh, get that job, get that job <laughs> for a few weeks, right? Get a real yeah. salary job, and it works, huh? It works. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it just <laughs> depends on where you're at. I, I was like 20 at the time, 21 at the time. So like I, I wasn't in sales long enough. They, they need two years of tax returns to prove that you can like make a reliable income if you're a hundred percent commission. And I just did not have that. So I had to go get a salary. If you've been doing sales for a long time, if you've been in business for a long time and you can prove a track record with a couple tax returns, then you can go qualify for a home loan. Um, and that was when I was still young and like not really understanding the difference between like uh, buying a place to live in and buying a place to rent out and the difference between a cash flow property and equity and stuff like that. And so, um, going back, I would probably not have done it that way. I probably would have just gotten some hard money and gotten to a rental pro that, uh, gotten to a property that I could have rented out to somebody and then just rented where I lived. Um, that's what I do now. I, I rent where I live. I own where I can rent. Um, and I think that there's uh, a lot of benefits to that, but, um, but yeah, if you're, if you're trying to buy a place to live in, if that's really what you want to do, I don't recommend it, but if you're really trying to do that, then, um, then yeah, getting that salary really, uh, really helped out. Hey, really helped out. you heard it here. You heard it here first, folks. Heard it here first. Break it. Uh. <laughs> um, all right. Well, next one. So I'm sure you made a mistake or two along the way, right? Anything, no. anything, uh, <laughs> I mean, you, <laughs> yeah, are, you no. are Superman, but too uh, many to count, bro. Too any, many to count. Any anything big that that were crucial to your success? Any <sighs> talk about? Um, there's so I, I mean I, I fail so much. Literally, I, I posted something on Facebook the other day about failure, and one of my buddies hit me up, sent me a screenshot of it, and he was like. I feel like you talk about failure all the time or something like that. And, uh, and, uh, uh, I was like, yeah, I do. It just, I, I, I totally believe in failure. Honestly, like you, you have to fail in order to, um, reach the next, uh, success. And, uh, you can try to do a lot of things to, mitigate that failure and, you know, investing in masterminds and in mentorship and in coaching and getting around good people, reading books, taking courses, all that kind of stuff will help you to be able to, um, to mitigate your risk and to help you move on to that next success faster. But without failure, um, 
you know, I, I, I just don't, I don't see a lot of successful people that haven't failed a ton. Um, and especially when you're in your twenties, like you just got to go out and fail and, and, um, you know, get around people who will help you succeed the next time. Um, as far as like one, like big failure, um, this was just something for me that this isn't something, this does not apply to everybody. And I'm sure that at some point in the future, I'm going to end up breaking, excuse me, this, this rule. But, uh, for me, I, I trusted people too much. Um, it's just, I, I give people the benefit of the doubt just as, as a person, I always give people the benefit of the doubt and think that their intentions are totally good. And, uh, there was a couple of uh, people that I had brought in that were, uh, business partners and, um, had brought me in and we had previous relationships in business. And, um, uh, I, I figured they're being honest with me. They figured I was being honest with them. And there's just a couple of, of, of things that happened that made me just, back away from the idea of partnering with somebody again as far as a 50 50 partnership goes like i'm open to like 80 20 partnerships even if i'm the 20 percent. you know what i mean like if i'm 20 percent owner or 25 percent owner and i'm just more of a general that's putting pieces together and you're doing operations like i'm cool with that or but like you still make the final decision on stuff like i'm cool with that or if i'm 80 percent over somebody else 20 percent owner like we can be partners on different levels but i just in my experience the 50 50 thing never works because that's the reason i became an entrepreneur to begin with because i don't like when people disagree with me as far as like and i'm not saying that in like an arrogant way but i'm saying or, or in a foolhardy way because a disagreeance is you know provides growth but um, in the, in the sense that like, if I know that I think this is going to be the best next step for my company and somebody else owns 50% of that, it's hard for me to compromise and be like, all right, we'll do it your way. Even though I think that I'm, that we should be doing it my way. And then there's a couple of things that happen. People going behind my back and trying to get better, um, deals through my manufacturer, even though I was the one that made the contact and they could have just talked to me about it, but they tried to like, you know, go all the sneaky route. So a couple of things like that, I would have just played things close to the vest and, um, and only trusted people that I knew that I could trust. And, and I've definitely learned that lesson. Um, another failure for me was another one of my friends that I was doing business with. I, um, opened my mouth too soon and that was a big failure for me. I, I promised a couple of things that I could not deliver. Ultimately, I didn't know that at the time it was not ill willed or ill intentioned when I first agreed to them. Um, but, uh, but I, I definitely learned that, uh, that I need, <clears throat> I need to sleep on things most of the time. Um, I'm a very agreeable person. That's why like I can close really well because I'm good at getting people to agree with me, but I like coming to an agreeance on something. So if I feel like we made a deal, I like to leave with a handshake and be like, okay, the deal's done. I can go to sleep now. And I've just been more disciplining myself lately to still leave it up in the air until I have time to really go back by myself, think about it, look at the numbers and really inspect if it's something that I'm going to be able to make happen. Um, cause it caused a stint in our friendship for a couple of months. And, uh, it, it was, it was, it was just totally my fault. I, it was just a rookie mistake. I was the first time owning a business. Um, I didn't realize all the other expenses that I would have to have. And then after I came back to him, I was like, Hey bro, I, I got, I can't, I can't pay out this much money for this particular task. It's just not going to work for me. And then I had to do it again. Um, because it still was too high and, um, you know, had to make those decisions. And it, it was a tough decision for me, bro, because I feel I'm always the kind of person that like tries to live up to my word. So if I say I'm going to do something, I do it. But at the same time, I knew that if I like kept doing what I said I was going to do, I'd suffocate my business and myself and uh, resent him for it. And so I was just like, you know, I got to make a decision that's good for my business here. And uh, so there's, 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 there's been so many failures and so many things to learn along the way, but um, those are a couple of them. Well, those are some great ones. And as we say here on the show, we make the mistakes so you don't have to. And <laughs> there you go. Let Travis Chapel make the mistakes for you, everybody. He yes. did, he did them, learn from them, hear them here. But at the end of the day, we still need to make these ourselves to really, really feel it and just to understand what it's like and that it does happen. And not necessarily go out and make mistakes on purpose, but in the sense that like it, it the, the fear of that holds too many people back exactly. is, is why I say that failure is so good because you, you have to, you have to know, like, I, I don't love failure, bro. Like when I fail, it still sucks. Like I don't like failing. Um, I'm very competitive. I like winning. I like having success. I, I don't like failing at all. Um, but the fear of failure holds way too many people back and you, you cannot be afraid of it. Just literally look at any successful person and talk to them about, 
um, their journey and they'll be like a dozen failures before they saw a really big success, a really big breakthrough, or they'll be like, they'll be this really big success. And then after that, there was a ton of failures and then another success and then a ton of failures and then another success. It's like, it just goes back and forth. It goes up and down, but the difference is those people are able to push through those and move on to the next thing with just as much energy and enthusiasm. Just like that quote, um, success is only the ability to move from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. And, uh, it's so, so true. That's great. That's some great stuff. And, uh, to wrap it all up, you pretty much already mentioned a ton of things, but what's like the biggest thing that the listener could uh, get out of this that should get out of this, like the biggest tip from what you did? Um, biggest tip I would say is join a mastermind. Um, I wish I would have done that earlier in my career. Um, to be honest, and I, and I, I do have a mastermind, so, uh, it's kind of a shameless plug there, but, I, hey, and I but that's we, not we the it. reason <laughs> we, we love it. That, we love it. We'll take it. <laughs> yeah, that's, but that's not the reason that I say that. Like it does not have to be my mastermind. It just is such a great environment to put yourself in some of those situations and uh, be able to rub shoulders with people. And, and it, it makes you invest money into yourself and an investment into yourself is always a positive ROI always, every single time, um, you can get something out of it. Um, so I, I would have, I, if I could go back, I would have started investing into this stuff when I was like literally 20, 21 years old. When I first started my career, I would have, I would have started doing this stuff a lot sooner. And I could vouch for this, everybody. Not a, not another shameless plug, but I did, do, <laughs> I did do your mastermind and it was my first one ever. And I was very, very skeptical of the whole thing. You know, you sold me on it and I'm so thankful that you did because it was it was life changing. I mean it was. I the people I just met alone and the things I learned and just opened up my eyes to a whole whole another world. Whole yeah. Another world. yeah. And I will definitely I appreciate that. Though, yeah. Of course, I will I will definitely be doing more in the future. And um yeah, that being said, you definitely you do have another mastermind coming up if people are interested. I do. Where I do. where where, yes. where could everybody find that if they're interested just to get an idea of what it is, take a look. Yeah, um, the the main thing that I have right now is just an application set up. Uh, so if you go to buildyournetwork.co slash alpha, um, there's an application there, just a quick application, a couple of uh, really quick questions, takes less than a minute to fill it out um, just so I can get a better idea. And then after that application, then we'll, we'll talk on the phone about it one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so I don't have like a sales page or anything set up for it or anything like that. Um, I, this one I'm approaching a little bit differently. I'm not going to do this hard closing thing where I like convince people to try to join. Um, I just want it to be something to where like, look, if you want to have access to the connect, the, the connections that I have, if you want to be able to network with people that I know, if you want to attend an event that I'm going to be going to and meet all the people that I know at the event, which is a lot, then this is a way for you to do it basically. Um, and, uh, so yeah, well, if, if anybody's interested, then go fill out that application. And after you fill it out, we'll, uh, I'll give you a call and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it on the phone for a little bit. See if, see if we're both a good fit for each other. Yeah. I mean, if anything, you could just, there's no harm in just checking out the website. That's build your network that co co. And, uh, you know, no harm in checking it out and just seeing what it's all about. And you want to throw some notable names out there of who these connections are? Just a couple quick ones. Yeah. I mean, if you're in the space, you might know a couple of the people that have been on. Um, Ed Milet was was just on recently. Bradley was on recently. Um, I have I have Lori Harder on the schedule. I have Carrie Kasem on the schedule. Um, JP Sears was on. John Lee Dumas is on. Um, Chris Harder. Uh, Patrick Bet David, Chris Gillibo. There, yeah, there's there's a lot of great people. Elena Cardone came on. There, there's been a lot of really cool people that I've been able to chat with. You forgot the shark. <laughs> uh, I, did, I did forget the shark. I forgot Kevin Harrington. Yeah, yes, Kevin, the Kevin biggest, big uh, pretty big one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, original shark on Shark Tank, Kevin yes, Harrington. Yes. He was actually the first shark to agree to come on the show. So back in the day, like a decade when they started it. Um, that episode just came out a few days ago. But uh, super cool guy, really easy to talk to, connect with. And he's actually, um, I believe, going to be at Thrive, which is the conference that I'm buying everybody tickets for in my mastermind. Um, so yeah, that's just a, another another uh, great uh, uh, perk for, for joining masterminds and stuff like that is having access to connections. All right. And now on to our favorite segment of the show. Welcome to the round with no name because they're all taken. So you have, uh, as you know, you don't have much time for every single question. We try to keep it within a couple seconds. Otherwise, okay. you'll, otherwise you'll be penalized and you, know, you don't want to know what happens then. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so quickly... We're just going to shoot him off right here. 
Favorite book? Uh, favorite book. Let's go with The One Thing by Gary Keller. You're stranded on an island. What is one item you would want with you? Uh, do I have water on the island? <laughs> There's water around you. Okay. All right. But let's drinkable water. Because if not, then I would take a water filter. Okay. <laughs> good, an- <laughs> good answer. Who was your greatest mentor? Um, I've had, a, I've had quite a few. It's hard to just pick one. I, I would say probably John Lee Dumas. He's been a huge mentor for me and, um, um, such a, such a cool dude down to earth, but also a very, very smart business mind as well. Is entrepreneurism a fad? Uh, that's a good question. I, um, I don't think so. I think that it's going to continue to, um, pick up steam. I think, I think that, I don't know how to say this, but I, I, I think that non entrepreneurship was a fad. Um, if however you would, however you would classify non entrepreneurship, but it's been, um, only, it's only been the last, you know, 7,500 years that we as a society have had this structure of go to school, go work for a giant corporation. That kind of stuff didn't exist until like the last, literally the last century of human history. Um, so I think that it's becoming way too politicized now and schooling's becoming way more expensive. Jobs are paying way less because they're flooded with qualified candidates, quote unquote qualified candidates that have a degree that says they're qualified, even though they may not be. And then they get paid um, to do a job for a certain period of time and certain hours in a week. I I think that is the fad um, that came on the scene for a solid 7,500 years. But when people start to figure out that colleges and universities are just businesses, just like everything else, um, and, you know, they don't have control on on whether or not you make an income when you when you go into your career, I think that that will be the fad and entrepreneurship will be more the more the norm in the next few decades. I like that. And uh, last one is audio the future podcasts audio totally uh totally yeah i mean there's so many advantages of audio i think i think ultimately uh you know short-term future i'd say audio i think ultimately video is the future um because i think that it's going to keep developing and developing to the point where it'll be like super easy to watch to consume video content even if you are walking around and not focused on your laptop because that's why right now that's the advantage audio has that's why i do audio audio all the time is like i i never i'm never sitting down in front of my computer watching a motivational speech on youtube i just don't i don't have time to just sit there and watch a two hour motivational speech. If I'm walking around or driving to the store or doing an errand, I'm having headphones in and I'm listening to audio the whole time. And that's the big advantage audio has over video. Um, but I think as, as video technology gets a little bit better, um, that's, that's going to kind of be where attention is going to be shifted. But in the next, you know, short term future, for sure, audio, for sure, there's going to be a huge boost in audio before virtual reality and augmented reality come into come into play as far as video and stuff like that goes. Uh, That's a great way to look great way to look at it. That's for sure. All right. Well, you did survive. Uh, Perfect. I'm I'm talking to my editor over here right now. And they're saying they're saying, let you go. You're good. (laughs) (laughs) Great, Great. All right. So let's just let's wrap things up. Um, you know, thanks for thanks for being on the show. And uh, any anything else you want to share with us, Travis Chapel? Of that's that's once again, everybody, buildyournetwork.co. You know, check it out. There you could you know see his water company, see Revive Water, see what they're all about. But more importantly, uh, see what his passion project is doing, his podcast, and all the great people that he has on the mastermind coming up. And uh, yep. yeah, I guess what's uh, what's next? What's the next quick step or? Next yeah, thing. last thing is uh, feel free to connect with me. I, I love connecting with people. So if you heard me on the show and you want to reach out, say what's up. Um, you know, Facebook Messenger is a great way to do it. Instagram direct message, great way to do it. I don't like having little numbers on my screen, so I pretty much answer them pretty pretty quickly most of the time. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, reach out, say what's up. Love to, love to love to chat, get to know everybody better. Yeah, and just to tell everybody, it does work. Reaching out on Instagram, Facebook does work. A uh, funny quick story. That's how Travis and I connected was yeah. through, through an Instagram message about podcasts. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, so funny. it does work. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, uh, you know, good luck with everything and we'll definitely be talking soon. Thanks for being on the show. Awesome, bro. Thanks a lot for having me on. That is all for this episode of Boss to Boss. Your next step is to visit boss2boss.com, where you will find proven techniques followed by professionals to help you make that next step. 
Again, that is Boss, the number two boss.com. And remember, the time is now. <laughs>